Do you ever feel like you wasted your hot era on someone? Like you look at old pictures of yourself at a certain time and you're like, oh my God, I was so bad. What the hell? I could have pulled anybody. And then you remember who you were obsessed with at the time and who you were like crying and screaming and throwing up over. Like, damn, they didn't even deserve that. I look too good to have been sad over you. Side note, that's probably you guys right now. Just know that future you is probably gonna look back and be like, I was too hot to be sad over that person. Snap out of it, he's probably ugly. Let's go through my different makeup eras together. Am I a prime example of makeup at the moment? Uh, no, but I promise I can do it. Me when I was 15, and believe it or not, I thought that wing was the biggest wing of life. I literally thought I looked like Ariana Grande with that wing. Although it is hideous, this took me longer to do than my makeup now. Violent jumped when I was 17 and entered my cake face, dark eyeshadow, big wing era. Not sure what this milk mustache situation is. A little humbling that I did this every day for fucking high school. But see, in certain lighting, she ate. She got better. This time in my life, I literally would rather die than be seen in public without makeup, so growth. Next is college, which I call my colorful eyeshadow era, where for some reason I was really experimenting with different eyeshadow. Very experimental. This is adorable. I look good in this. The eyebrows, let's calm it down. And again, why is it red? We enter COVID, which I call my huge falsies era. I say big falsies, this, yeah, I mean big falsies. Huge falsies even. Then comes my lash extension era, which was just like mega volumes all the time. And the girl did amazing, but I just think they made my downturn eyes just look extra downturned. Around this time was when I finally started feeling confident without makeup because I had my lash extension. So I was like, I still look good. And then add some color context to that. I was like, I look extra good. This is my makeup now. See, I told y'all, I told you guys I can do makeup. I'm in my like extra dewy, over blush to a violent amount era with half cut lashes and color contact. I think in the future, I could see myself thinking that maybe I put on way too much blush as my comments tell me. But right now, she's cute, we love her. I'm absolutely baffled, okay? How dare people be mean to me? I'm such a simple girl, be nice. Something about me is I love birds, okay? Like, it's just one of my favorite things. Because I have a bird, okay? His name's Kiwi, he's a canary, he's so cute. Look how photogenic he is, he's such a king. And hot take, underrated bird, pigeon. Everybody makes fun of them because they can't make a nest and do like basic bird things, but like, they were domesticated and then released and now they don't know how to do anything. It's actually so sad, don't be mean to pigeon. But anyway, so I always take pictures of birds, okay? I'm not joking, anytime I see a bird, I will stop to take a picture of it. So I'm minding my business, I see this really cute bird, and I was like, I need a picture. Of so I take a picture of this bird and then this man starts screaming at me. Hey, stop fucking taking a picture of me I don't want this fucking picture all over the internet And my friend was like, yo, dude, relax. She's just taking a picture of the bird. She just likes birds He's like, no, I know how these young girls are. They take pictures of people and post them online and la da da I don't want to go viral on TikTok. Sir, let's calm it down. You cannot pay me to post you on TikTok. Photo in question. All I do is be perfect and sweet and angelic and love birds and this is what I get. explains why children are such like pathological liars. Why do they lie so unprovoked all the time? There's this one core memory I have from when I was like nine or 10. Yes, I was a Swifty back then. I was a Swifty since I was like eight years old, okay? Never tried to call me a fake fucking Swifty. There was this girl I was friends with and she was like going on being like, yeah, I'm going to the Fearless tour. Like for my birthday, we're gonna take all my friends to the Taylor and concert, all this stuff. And I was like, oh my God, please, like, let me come. She's like, obviously you're gonna come, blah, blah, blah. And I was so high. I'm like, no fucking way. I'm about to see Taylor Swift the first time ever. A few weeks later, I see her at school and I'm like, yo, so what's happening with the Taylor concert? Like, I really wanna go. Again, I didn't even know when the dates were. I didn't know the internet. I had a computer that was literally this thick with a screen this big. And I was like, so when's the concert? Like, are we going, whatever? And she goes, yeah, so I'm not taking you to the concert anymore. I'm taking Jesse. And Jesse's sitting there all perched up being like, and I was like, first of all, fuck you, Jesse. Second of all, what do you mean you're not taking me to the concert anymore? And I remember this so well because I was so upset and so fucking jealous of this bitch, Jesse. Flash forward 10 years, okay? I was working in a jewelry store at the time. I was working at Pandora. That was like my second job. This girl comes in again, right? So I was talking to her and I was like, hey, I just have to ask you something. She's like, what's up? I'm like, did you actually go to the Fearless tour with like Jesse? Was that a real thing? She was like, uh, no. I'm like, okay, because when we were like eight, you told me that you were going to the concert and you ended up not taking me. She was like, oh yeah, I was just weird back then. Like, I definitely lied about that. I was not going to the concert. I never saw her. And I still remembered it to this day. She was like, how do you remember that? I'm like, because it was my first betrayal. Maybe that's how I remember it. I got my clarity. 10 years later, and that's the most important part. Jesse, did you go to opening night of the Eras tour in 2023? I don't think so. 
I'm visiting my parents' house right now, and last night they had some guests come over, right? Part of the guests, they had, like, a five-year-old daughter, okay? She's, like, one of those five-year-olds that, like, everything she wants, she wants to keep it and take it, okay? And, you know, I have a bunch of extra stuff. I had some, like, makeup that I didn't really need, some toys, and I was like, yeah, you can take it. So I'm giving her, like, ring, lipstick, I gave her a bracelet, all this stuff. In my room, I have this, like, small stuffed animal collection, and each stuffed animal kind of has, like, sentimental meaning to it, and that's why I have it. She looks, and she's like, I wish I could have one of those, and I'm like... Okay, well, I have this like monkey. Let me show you guys the monkey. Got this on my 21st birthday. The hotel that I was staying at gave it to me. That's why it's sentimental me. They gave me two. So I was like, oh, do you want a monkey? And then she was like, no, I want the yellow one. Let me show y'all the yellow one. Who's talking about Chim Chim? She wanted Chimmy. I'm like, no, no, you can't. Nope. I was like, that's my favorite one. You can't take it. I was so scared that she was going to go to my mom and be like, oh, I want that yellow stuffed animal and she won't give it to me. Because my mom's the type where she'll be like, Sahar, it's rude. She's five. You're 23. You don't need a fucking stuffed animal. Give it to her. And then she's like, how about the other yellow one? She wanted this one. And no, he's so cute. He literally looks like so angry and like ready to kill you. But I'm like, no, you're not taking that one either. I'm not positive if this makes me like childish that I refuse to give a five-year-old my stuffed animals, but like they're mine. She agreed to take the turtle, but then last minute changed her mind and was like, okay, I'll take the monkey. Because my love life is always so dry, I forget that there's other people who are like constantly just like hooking up with people. There's people who are talking to multiple people at a time. Yes, I went on a couple dates. Leave me alone. That doesn't mean anything. None of those were serious, okay? Dates are just testing the water. I'm allowed to go on dates and those are my first couple of dates in a few months. My friend was telling me about how she has these girlfriends who literally are like hooking up with new guys every weekend. Like they're talking to multiple guys at a time. Like all this stuff. Good for them. I love that for them. I don't know how they do it though. Like I don't know how that's a possibility. But I... Am interested in someone when I like someone they become my sole hyper fixation and they are the only one that I will ever want and until I'm not hyper fixated on them anymore I'm gonna be convincing myself that they're my soulmate that we're meant to be together and that I'm gonna be planning our entire future together and planning our kids names as much as I want to be a man-eater and like someone who can just like fuck around I don't think I'm emotionally capable of it the most important things for young girls and women is to understand your period i didn't even know about like period tracking apps until i was like 17. finding the right period tracking app is crucial and that's why an app like 28 wellness is perfect <gasps> 28 wellness taught me that most fitness plans and workout routines are based on men and men's cycles. it doesn't consider our menstrual cycle the app has fitness plans meal plans everything it has workout routines exercise plans nutrition plans all based on your cycle so you can work with your cycle instead of against it, it just helps you understand yourself better Better. You know those days where you're like, oh my gosh, I was acting insane? Now I'm like, wait, I was acting insane because I'm on this day of the cycle. All right. If you want to become the expert of you, make sure to download the 28 Wellness app. Why does putting your hair in a slick back just like solve all your problems? If you're kind of sad, just put your hair in a slick back. You're running late, put your hair in a slick back. You're feeling lazy, slick back. Your hair is disgusting, you haven't washed it in like three weeks, slick back. There's nothing this won't fix. It looks amazing. Are you kidding me? So some of my friends tell me they think I have riz or that I'm very riskful when it comes to like guys, whatever. I don't think I have riz, but I do think I'm charming. And I think that anytime anyone speaks to me, they do fall in love with me. I don't know what it is. It's just the power I hold. I will say, I think I can be really bold at times, but I'm only bold when I don't care. Like if I actually like someone, I literally have a stick in my ass. I cannot speak. The other day I was filming for my friend David's like blind dating video. And I was like one of the girls that these people were like blind dating. But then after us, there was another group coming in to film for this other guy's like blind dating video. And I met the guy and I don't know what it was. Something about him i was just super intrigued by him he just was like cute but then also just like really quiet but then when he would speak it was just really funny so i was like huh um oh my god look at that face you look like my next mistake david had asked me if i wanted to be in this guy's video too because somebody canceled so they're like do you want to be like another bachelorette or whatever and then i went up to this guy and i was like yeah i was supposed to be in your video but i knew if i was in it i would immediately win so i had to give the other girls a chance and he was like oh yeah for sure you definitely would and then i'll what? And then a little bit later, I was gonna leave, so I wanted to say bye to people, so I went and like to the green room, and I was like, oh, hey, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna head out, whatever. That guy was in the room again, I was talking to my friend, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm like gonna head out, blah, blah, blah. I told him that I couldn't be in his video because I would have like blown the competition out of the water. Also, it's raining right now, so if you hear rain, that's what it is. Then my friend looks at him and goes, oh, yeah, you definitely would have fallen in love with her, and I'm like, easily. And he's like, oh, yeah, I already did, but I mean, she didn't win the last one, so I'm always gonna wonder like if you're up to par, if you're like good enough. I was like, the only reason I didn't win last time was because I was 
was smart. I said something really smart and like, it's just, I guess people can't handle how intelligent I am. I don't know. We all just kind of laughed about that and then I was quickly like, okay, we'll have fun filming, bye. And then I left. Didn't get his number, didn't get his Instagram, didn't get anything. Part of me wonders if I'll like run into him again one day and we'll fall in love. Maybe he was the love of my life and I really just fumbled. All I can say is I was enchanted to meet you.